Racing takes place out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Saturday the 13th of April 2024. We've got a 10 race program with race number one set to get underway at 5 past 12. And we begin with a maiden juvenile plate for the Phillies over the 1000 metre trip. The bar pod will commence with the running of race two. Place accumulator in race three and the pick six in race number four. Joining me on the line is Graham Hawkins for this 10 race uh, preview show. And uh, Graham, how are you doing? All good, thank you, Rahil. Yes, a very uh, interesting day's racing at uh, Hollywood Nets Kenilworth. Ten races, as you've mentioned, and the weather looks good. Well, let's get straight into it. Race number one on the program. Your favourite is number two, B. Mary, at 22 to 10. Duchess of Paloma is trading at 33 to 10, along with uh, number one, Scarlet Macau. It's 7 to 1 about Poetic Princess. That's number three. And then it's 14 to 1 and better by all those. Now, there's a number of first timers that take their place in race number one. But it is the race runners that uh, set the standard here and they dominate in the market. Two, nine, and one are the ones that uh, are at the top of betting boards. And how, how do you see race number one unfolding? Very interesting race. Uh, number nine, Duchess of Paloma, comes out of that. Very, very strong little ballerina form line uh, back on World Sports Betting Meta at the end of January. Now, she might need the run. She ran eighth in that race after a promising fourth first time out, but the horses that ran ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth all came out to win their next start. So, as we know, that's a very strong form line. And then Poetic Princess also comes out of a very strong form line. She ran fifth on debut by Sahara Cat. Kind of wonderful, was fourth in that race. It came out last week to win by six lengths. So Duchess of Paloma and Poetic Princess represent very strong form lines. Of course, Scarlett McCaw and B. Mary made nice debuts. Scarlett McCaw third to Makazoli. That form line has yet to stand up, but B. Mary caught the eye on debut, went third behind Tanneron, likely to be a little sharper and can step forward here. So these are the obvious four, as the thing suggests. Um, first time, it will need to be a little special to be able to turn these over. My hesitant first choice is number nine, Duchess of Paloma, coming out of that very strong little ballerina form line, but she might just need the run. All of numbers one, Scarlett McCall, two B. Mary, and three Poetic Princess could end up in the winner's enclosure. I think the four horse box quartet is the way to go. Numbers one, two, three, and nine. Those are the four horses to play around in race number one, but uh, definitely I agree with Graham. Number nine, Duchess of Paloma, could just be the right horse in the race on the basis of her last effort. Moving along to race number two, a class five contest over 1,600 metres. Race two, the start of the bar part, 1240 is the off time. Master of Paris at 16 to 10. To the moon and back is at 2 to 1. It's 9 to 2 about Big Papa. It's then 7 to 1 and better by all those. Now, uh, Master of Paris, he's uh, a horse that um, is knocking on, on the door for that next career victory. Beaten behind Radicchio last time out. And Radicchio did come through to Frankie's own form just uh, this past weekend. So that form line has, uh, has worked out thus far. And then you've got number 5, To the moon and back, who uh, ran in that same race and... He was fought beat, uh, behind Radicho, and when we look at uh, the weight turnaround, he is one and a half kgs better off, and he was finishing off his race quite nicely, so he, you would expect that the extra 200 meters will be in his favor, as opposed to number seven, Master of Paris, who just seems to be at best over 1,400 meters. Yeah, these two do stand out in a shallow race. Numbers five, to the moon and back, and number seven, Master of Paris. Would I be surprised if they're it was an upset, no, it wouldn't be, because uh, Master of Paris, as you said, is knocking at the door, but I question whether he's got the resolution to win, and as you also mentioned, uh, perhaps better over 1,400 metres, but he is the obvious also to form along with number five to the moon and back. It's not a deep race. They should run first and second in whichever order. Uh, three prime ventures, probably worth a mention. He can improve. Uh, number one, big Popper uh, runs the occasional good race and from pole position and with 57 on his back, Big Popper can get involved in this uh, rather moderate class 5, 1600 metre handicap. Uh, notwithstanding the weight turnaround, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to number 7, Master of Paris, to confirm the form with number 5, to the moon and back. But these two do stand out 
and uh, just selecting these two in the first leg of the bipod should get you through. Uh, my bet of choice for this meeting is the place accumulator, which starts in race three. Uh, but numbers five and seven should get you through the first leg of the bipod. Yeah, I think what's represented in black and white, those two numbers uh, should be good enough in race number two. Moving along to race number three, 2,200 meters the distance. It's a middle stakes that will get the place accumulator underway. Quarter past one, the off time. Favorite, Ale Maurice at 11 to 10. 5 to 2, Love is a Rose. Sudden Song is at 7 to 1. It's 8 to 1 about Supreme Dream. And then it's 10 to 1. And better by all those. Now, with Ale Maurice, last time out, he was heavily supported in the market. 5 to 1 into 18 to 10. And he got the job done. He's gone up 6 points for that uh, victory. He's uh, a two-time winner from 11 starts. And there does seem to be quite a bit of upside to the son of Dynasty. He's had 11 starts, but I think there they could be still more improvement to come from him. Yes, he's a typical uh, latesty. Uh, his recent form is uh, is really good and he's heading in the right direction. He steps up from 1,800 meters of his last victory to 20. It really be a problem for him. Richard Ferry and Brett Crawford teaming up with key runners in races three and four. So for Ale Maurice, a banker in the first leg of the place accumulator, I've decided to hedge my bets. He is my top choice, number four, Ale Maurice, but I'm covering with numbers seven, Love is a Rose. Uh, she's very well treated by the conditions of the race. And I'm also going to include number three, Sudden Song, who seldom runs a bad race, only because going the 2,200 meters, while we expect Ale Maurice to be as competitive over 2,200 meters as he was over 1,800 meters last time, it is a bit of a question mark the pace is a bit of a question mark but la maurice is finding anti-market support anti-post market support uh, the early price has already been snapped up so there's a lot of confidence around for number four la maurice so he is the clear top choice uh, and i fancy him to be chased home by number seven love is a rose and three sudden song uh, it is a middle stakes over 2200 meters so it's not a handicap and Love is a Rose is quite well treated. She hasn't, uh, she hasn't run since the 6th of January, so she's been four months off the track. But of course, that was in the paddock stakes, and she plunges in class here, uh, the paddock stakes being a group one run. This is a much more suitable race for Love is a Song. So don't, uh, Love is a Rose, so don't, uh, don't write her off. This horse number one, Salvatore Mundi, has been taking on a lot stronger company, and uh, he's a horse that is guaranteed to stay. Could he not be the, the sort of the upset type in this race? I just haven't uh, enjoyed his lack of enthusiasm in his last couple of races, but we know he's better than that. And yes, he's well tried as a staying type of horse, so the distance won't pose a problem. And he could certainly get into the frame of the Cortez. So concerned, along with number five, Supreme Dream, there's another two and a half to shoulder. Yeah, he's definitely one that uh, I think we need to keep an eye on and uh, just see how he goes down to the start. If he looks to be uh, moving well and looks to be in a good space, well then he could be a horse that uh, could run a huge race in race number three. But Ale Maurice, going to be the top choice here. You've got number seven, Love is a Rose, and uh, number three, Southern Song. All horses in with solid winning claims. Race number four, a maiden plate over 1,400 metres, 13.53 is the off time. It is a start off uh, the pick six and uh, it is Richard Free, Brett Crawford to the four year once again with... Mont, uh, Mont Lucier and uh, this horse ran second last time out to Hudia. Richard had a 10 out of 12 draw to contend with but uh, he managed to overcome it uh, quite well and uh, this horse went to the head of affairs and just found one too good on the day. Unfortunately that form line is not, hasn't stood up and Hudia did absolutely zilch for that form line last week when running. I think he, he, ran, uh, he ran last last weekend but um, this horse he brings the right form into the race and from draw two over the track and trip uh, that he ran second over last time out. He uh, should be good enough to uh, to win here, Graham. A lot of confidence around. He was priced up at 18 to 10. I see that has already been snapped up. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Brett Crawford and Richard Free races three and four. Uh, Ale Maurice. I'm more confident here with number two, Mont Loisier. I note what you're saying about the form line and where Hudia ran last week, but in fact, Hudia and Axel from uh, the Andre Nell stable both ran absolute shockers last week, so there has to be something wrong there. Uh, given the fact that he had to be used up quite a lot last time from that wide draw, I think he'll be given a more patient ride from gate number two. Close to the pace, but not 
perhaps not going forward unless uh, there is no willing pace setter in the race. Uh, Mont Loisier for me is a very confident first choice. Uh, here's my suggested banker bet for the uh, for the pick six. There's some very competitive races as they always are at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. I think Brett Crawford is looking forward to a very good day. He sends out more runners at this meeting than either Candace Bass Robinson or Justin Snaith, which is quite unusual. So Montreuxier goes on top with a fair degree of confidence, but it's not a one-horse race. Uh, there are a few others that are worth a mention. Number three, Water Dragon has scope for improvement. He only has two runs under the belt. Groove Jet had his first run as a gelding on the 13th of January. He ran third, only a length off King of Spin. We haven't seen him for the last four months, but he's also nicely drawn in gate four. Walk With Me, promising debut behind African Prince, can step forward from that. And then Greenland is obviously well tried. He's having his 10 starts in the Maidens, but he's been a consistent place getter. And it might suit him to sit, step back to 1,400 metres. But all of that being said, I'm rowing in quite strongly with number two, Mont Loisier, uh, to get the job done from a handy draw. He's been second in his last two starts, and I expect him to go one better here. Could just be a suggested banker for you, horse number two, in race number four, the start of the pick six. Moving along to race number five, this is a class four contest for the Phillies and Mares over 1,400 metres. And it is quite a competitive race. You've got uh, Call Me Getrix, your nine to two, narrow favourite. Five to one about Go Like Flow, 11 to two will Goog. 6 to 1 among the clouds, 6 to 1 glee club, 8 to 1 and better ball those. Now, a trappy contest for Phillies and Mares, but um, this horse called me Getrix, despite the 62 kgs on the back, she's a filly that uh, could certainly play a leading uh, lead role here. And on the basis of her last start, where she wasn't disgraced behind stable companion Rainbow Laurie Keat and uh, reported the felt a miss, but the vet didn't find anything. She could be, she could be uh, one of the leading players and. Uh, the market suggests that uh, at 9-2, to two, she could run a huge race. Definitely my top choice in a very, very competitive handicap, as I mentioned. Competitive handicaps on this 10-race program, and this is certainly one of those. Has got 62 to shoulder, but I like the fact that uh, she's stepping back to 1,400 metres. Uh, she's one for, from one over this track and trip. I think she found 1,800 metres a little beyond her last time when beaten by stable companion Rainbow Lorikeet. I'm expecting her to be a lot more effective over this track and trip. She's well drawn, and I think that call me Jetix does. Uh, there are a number in this class for handicap for footies over 1400 meters that have blinked. Run has got a chance. Uh, number two, where uh, Goog is probably better than her last run, although she takes a stronger here. Uh, number three, Glee Club Kawakazi last time out. Uh, Go Life Flow. Uh, what you see is what you get with Go Life Flow. She likes to go forward, and she could have a bit of a chance. Uh, those appear to be the principal uh, uh, runners, but don't exclude number 13, Senora Victoria. If the pace is on, she's got the worst of the draw, but she likes to run at them late. And uh, number 13, Senora Victoria, certainly features among my top four selections. I'm going with number four, Call Me Jetrix. To beat number 13, Senora Victoria, then number three, Glee Club, and number one among the clouds. But yeah, it's always the prospect of a funny result, uh, but I'm going to suggest that Cormie Jetrix is the one that they all have to beat. Yeah, number 13, Senora Victoria, could certainly be a nice find here from Graham at around 14 to 1 in the market. Sean Veal, Eric Sands, a strong combination here, yeah? and um, this horse was finishing off a race quite nicely last time out, so it could just be a runner and uh, one that you want to include for those exactors and uh, the upset type of result in those pick sixes. Race number six, 1600 meters a trip, and uh, the six race gets underway at three minutes past three. It's a class three contest where number five, Pomodoro's Jet, is your seven to two favorite. Inamorare is at four to one, Fibonacci, 11 to two. Tyrion Lannister is at 15 to 2 along with Solomon Seal. It's then 17 to 2 and better ball those. Now um, this was Pomodoro's Jet. He's uh, been priced up at 7 to 2 and um, I'm sure that his supporters are going to climb into that price because uh, he's gone off as a well fancied favorite in what was it? What's it? Four of his last five outings. So uh, I'm sure that his supporters will go with him once again and when you have a look at his form over the distance it's absolutely lethal unbeaten over track and trip and 
Craig Zaki gets on well with him, so um, you expect this horse to play a leading role once again. I think I'm chairman of the Pomodoro's Jet Fan Club. Um, he's one of my favourite horses in training because he gives you a good go every time he runs. Uh, but the handicap is starting to get to grips with Pomodoro's Jet. He's gone up from an, from an 88 to a 93 for his last win. It was an emphatic win. As you say, he's quite lethal over track and trip, having won three from three. And Craig Zaki's written him four times for three wins and a fourth. Um, but this is a very, very competitive handicap, Rahil. Pomodoro's Jet is my top choice, but I wouldn't be rushing into back or to claim the 7-2. to two. He was at 5-1 to one at one stage. That was probably a better value. Uh, but you, yes, he'll have his supporters, if only because of the fact that he's got beaten over track and trip. But it is going to start to get a flat spot, but as you say, it's to our favour that uh, Zaki knows him well. But there's so many with winning chances. Fibonacci... Uh, second to Tyrion Lannister last time out. They meet again. Fibonacci should be able to finish ahead of Tyrion Lannister, although not much to choose between them. Inna Marare has uh, also won well, his only, only start over the track and trip, and he's in pretty good form. He gets two and a half kilograms from Pomodoro's jet. Solomon Seal, very interesting. We, were, we spent a lot of time chatting about Solomon Seal last week or two weeks ago when he last ran. Um, and he came flying up to run second to San Pedro. Uh, both you and I have had the feeling that there's more to come from Solomon Seal. He gets four and a half kilograms from Pomodoro's jet. So don't draw a line through Solomon Seal. He is, in fact, my second choice. Prometer, also very decent. Lindbergh let us down last time out, but he's better than that. Uh, he did and, uh, his last run over this course of distance when beating Blackberry Malt. Quartermain can surprise. So to sum it all up, I think it's a very, very good race, this one. I think we're in for a treat. Uh, Pomodoro's Jet is my first choice, ahead of number six, Solomon Seal, number four, and number seven to follow them home. Uh, but there are many with chances, and I'm playing it pretty wide in all exotics. Yeah, it's definitely a very competitive race, but uh, Graham could be uh, quite right there. Number six, Solomon Seal, Sean Veal back in the irons. That gives me all the confidence I need to be uh, with this uh, son of Patala Palace once again after running second last time out with Anthony Andrews aboard. Gone up a point for that run, but um, he could certainly be in uh, the right type of race to uh, go well. Moving along to race number seven next, and uh, race seven gets underway at uh, 38 minutes past three. 1,800 meters uh, the distance. It's a Cape Sea stakes for fillies and mares. Basic Maneuvers is your 2-1 to one favorite. It's uh, 33 to 10 about Summer Night City. Catalea is at 4-1. to one. It's 7-1 to one about Dream Searcher. 8-1. to one. And better by all those. Now, uh, number seven, Basic Maneuvers. She w was well fancied straight out the maidens. And she just found two a penny too good. And uh, I think two a penny reeled off a hat-trick, if I'm not mistaken. And she's gone up two points for that run. Alda de Mea back aboard. This uh, daughter of uh, Lancaster Bomber. And it was quite interesting, Graham. Because last time out, Richard Fourie had, uh, had ridden two a penny to victory in a previous start. And then he hopped aboard Basic Maneuvers. And... Aldo, Aldo was aboard uh, to a penny, if I'm not mistaken. So it was a swap day. And uh, yeah, it seemed like uh, Aldo got uh, the bet of, uh, of Richard, I think it was. Yeah, musical chairs. Uh, I do think that uh, my top choice in the race is another very competitive race, these Cape Sea Stakes. If you look at the best rated column, uh, basically they're all pretty evenly matched. I'm going to stay with number four, Summer Night City. Uh, I was on it last time when she, she ran second to the heavily supported Luce Verde. This was obviously against the boys. Uh, she's back in a Phillies and Mares race. So, Summer Night City for me, but good thing she is not. I think she'll go well. She's ideally course and distance suited. She's won twice from eight starts over track and trip. And Craig Zaki takes a ride for Eric Sands. It's interesting that Sean Veal, uh, who is generally first choice rider for Eric Sands when available, uh, rides the more likely way to number six eternal optimist, who wasn't too far behind Summer, City, Summer Night City last time. Uh, so don't exclude number six eternal optimist from your calculations. Obviously, basic maneuvers catches the eye with that good post-maiden run. And uh, in the same race, uh, Catalea uh, was uh, back in fourth position after setting the pace. Richard Faree uh, rides for Greg Ennion, who's got one or two nice runners on the car. Dream Searcher can't be excluded, nor can Eric Sands' third runner, Destined to Dance. So 
it's pretty competitive from a place accumulator point of view i'm going to include just numbers four summer night city and seven basic maneuvers but i could be a little vulnerable because the the more you look at this race the wider it gets but uh, uh let's go with number four summer night city she's very game she's very consistent she likes to stay on and run at them in the closing stages i think she's down in class from her last run when running against the boys so she should go well for us yeah but basic maneuvers uh catalea and eternal optimist uh, round out my top four selections yeah, basic maneuvers will have to do it the hard way with 61 and a half kgs on the back for a three-year-old having to concede weight all around. So she could just be a, an opposable type in race number seven, but it's all up to you. Are you going to structure your bets in the seventh race? Moving along to race number eight, quarter past four is the off time. It's a class uh, four contest, 1800 meters the distance. Prevalence is at 22 to 10. Blue Bay is at 7 to 2. 5 to 1 about join the dots at 7 to 1. Aberdeen for Lupaki. 8 to 1 and better by those. Now, uh, what's your thoughts on uh, on race number 8, Grandma? Are you in the camp of uh, this horse, uh, Prevalence, who's uh, getting closer with each start and uh, wasn't far last time out beaten under length from a 2 draw. He looks to be a horse that uh, could play a leading role, but I like a bit of number 1, Ignatius, from uh, gate number 1. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you uh, included him in the play last time out. We did. We fancied him as a bit of a long shot. He comes out of that same form line as Summer Night City when uh, Summer Night City ran second to Luce Verde. This ran fourth. So, depending on how Summer Night City runs, uh, will be an indication as to what we can expect from Ignatius. Although, of course, from an exotic bet point of view, that is far too late. I'm happy to bank a number two prevalence in the place accumulator. That's what I've suggested. I'm not so certain about that as uh, far as the uh, jackpots and the pick sixes are concerned. He's a clear and obvious first choice but he's very much in the master of Paris uh, sort of mold he doesn't uh, seem to know how to win uh, he hasn't won since he's uh, said he's made a ticket 571 days ago but his overall form 14 starts for a win two seconds and six thirds and his good third behind Katsu last time out and prior to that a good second to quarter main uh, this is not a race that's going to take a lot of winning uh, I guess tactics are going to play a role hopefully the race is run at a decent gallop that'll suit prevalence and I do think he's a roving banker I do think he's a place to accumulate a banker uh, but is he vulnerable yes he hasn't won since uh, shedding his maiden ticket all that time ago so Ignatius is a runner Join the dots can improve. I'm not quite sure what to make of number six, Boer Lopeki. Uh, he caught all of us except for Darren Burroughs napping when winning at a big price last time out. He absolutely blew them away when fitted with blinkers for the first time. Uh, he beat Damio by three and a half lengths. Blue Bay uh, has his first start since winning his maiden, beating Damio by only half a length. Uh, Aberdeen will continue to progress. He's underachieved, he's underperformed, but it was a better run last time out when we fancied him a bit at a big price. He was short in the betting all the while got 10 to 1 that day eventually started 33 to 10 so there was a lot of confidence for Aberdeen last time out and he gets the blinkers again so Aberdeen is another one of those uh, that is making us wait my selection is number two prevalence ahead of number 11 Aberdeen and then numbers one four and seven behind that and a big question mark for me around number six for Lopiki uh, the way he won last time out if he was to win again I wouldn't be surprised because as I said this this race won't take a lot of winning but uh, I do think that Prevalence uh, does set the standard here. Yeah, Prevalence looking to uh, break the duck and get that second career victory under the belts. 571 days since he last uh, won a race and that was in the maiden rank. So let's see how he goes in race 8. Race number 9, class 4, 1200 meters, 1650. The off time, the Tinker Man is your favorite at 4 to 1. It's 6 to 1, Night Tiger, 8 to 1, Raf's Rocket, 4 Dread, Night Bomber. It's then 10 to 1. And better bar those. Now, uh, this does look to be uh, a very, very competitive contest and a race where you probably need to go uh, quite wide in the exotics. But uh, have you man managed to uh, narrow uh, your uh, selections down your gram or uh, it, is it at one of those field races? No, I don't think we can go field. Uh, obviously, that's a very safe play. And these uh, class four handicaps over 1,200 meters are always competitive and we've seen upsets there in 
them before. Uh, but I'm going to go with a list of five runners. I'll go through them in order of preference. Uh, my top choice would be number six, Night Tiger. He's knocking at the door. He's got very solid form over the track and trip. He does have 61 and a half to shoulder, but uh, there are signs in his recent runs that his next win is imminent. He is a three-time winner. Could knock up his fourth winner. My second choice would be the early favourite, number 14, the Tinker Man. He's certainly bounced back to best form. He's run second in his last two starts. Hopefully Bernard Fader fulfills his engagement and doesn't go missing in action like he did halfway through last week's meeting because uh, uh, the Tinker Man goes well for Bernard Fader. My third choice would be number nine, uh, Night Bomber, also there and thereabouts. My fourth choice would be number three, Fort Red, only because you can never leave him out. Richard Free. Uh, gets a good tune out of Fort Red, and he's a seven-time winner. So in this class of race, uh, you could never leave him out. And then my lurker in the pack, I've also got to find a lurker. Sometimes they come up, sometimes they run disappointingly. But my lurker in the pack is number 10 Street Outlaw. Uh, there have been signs that he's ready to improve. He's plummeting down the ratings. Uh, he's been dropped another three pounds. Uh, just a couple of runs back, he was an 86. Now he's a 73. He gets blinkers for the first time in his career, and that could sharpen him up. Uh, so my lurker in the pack is number 10 Street Outlaw. So my narrow list of five in a large field and a very competitive field in order, uh, in numerical order, would be numbers uh, 3, 6, 9, 10, and 14. And I'm hoping the winner comes out for one of those uh, but there are others with chances no doubt i like your look there number 10 street outlaw 14 to 1 in the market i think that's a tremendous value in uh, what does look to be quite an open race and uh, hopefully the blinkers have uh, the desired effect moving along to race number 10 now and race 10 is a class 4 for phillies and mares over the 1100 meters 23 minutes past 5 is the off time and uh, your, here your favorite is horse number nine, Great Cat, trading at four to one in the market. It's uh, five to one about number 10, Night Vigil, and number 14, Hear My Voice. It's six to one, Give Me the Waltz. It's in uh, eight to one, and better bar those. Now, number nine, uh, Great Cat, uh, has um, has obviously put in a, a good effort last time out behind Nordic Quest, and uh, she was uh, one of the runners doing her best work at the finish. So she's definitely going to be um, in with a solid uh, chance once again. You've got uh, Hear My Voice who's looking for three in a row. She's gone up three points for her latest victory. And uh, a horse like uh, Night Vigil who ran a good second last time out behind Katira. And that was uh, against a uh, slightly more competitive contest. That was a Class E. But uh, she's got 61 and a half kgs on the back. Could this uh, be a race uh, set up for a horse that... Uh, could just be uh, sitting towards the mid pack and uh, comes in with a lightweight here, or, or do you think one of these horses, um, a what's it, nine, ten, and fourteen, could fight it out? Yeah, look, it is a competitive class four handicap for Phillies and Mayors, 1,100 metres. Just a reminder, of course, being a 10-race programme, Jackpot 2 starts in race 7. So although this race doesn't form part of the place accumulated of the pick six, it is the final leg of Jackpot 2s. So in that sense, an important race for us as far as the exotics are concerned. Uh, I do think the form could work out here. Uh, number nine, great cat. Uh, ends what could be a good day for the Brett Crawford stable. Uh, Louis Cotter takes the ride. Now, if you take out that penultimate run where a number of horses inexplicably ran badly behind Pineapple Mint Green on that occasion, maybe it was the draw she was drawn towards the stand side, didn't get into the action. But if you took out of that race, then all of her recent form suggests she is the one to beat here. And Brett Crawford has made no secret of the fact that he holds Great Cat in high regard. So, Great Cat on top for me, uh, but Night Vigil is clearly going going the right, right way. She's lightly raced. She's a three-year-old by Verst and Gitterics. But she was punished a little bit for her second mile Castillo. Went up three pounds. I hate it when horses get punished for running second, punished for getting beaten. Uh, so she's obviously got the right sort of form to come into this race, uh, but the handicapper is uh, not making her task in easier. My third choice would be number 14, Hear My Voice, and my fourth choice, number 13, Give Me the Waltz. Uh, but I do think that you perhaps need to throw in uh, number 16, Silver Screen, into your calculations if you're playing Jackpot 2, of which this race forms the last leg. Now, if there was to be an upset, where would it come from? Uh, that's difficult to pinpoint because there are many that have the ability to surprise. I've expected more from Tibetan Voyage, but she's uh, failed to deliver. Love Shack 
took a long time to win her maiden, finally got it right, beating Tequila Sky. Uh, but from the same stable, we saw Strata, who also beat Tequila Sky when winning her maiden after a long time in that uh, in the maiden ranks, come out and win her second race the other day. So is Love Shack without a chance? No, she's game, she's consistent, and she's handicapped with an opportunity here. Uh, but I'm going 9, 10, and 14 as my top three choices. Don't leave out number 13, Gimme the Waltz. She's always been highly spoken of. I'm expecting a kind of a form result in the 10th and final. This horse number two is Trey Sheik. First run for Pete Porter, blinkers off, Craig Zaki aboard, and... If we go back to uh, around three starts back over track and trip behind here, my voice, she, she comes in extremely well weighted. She's six kgs better off for a one and a quarter, one and three parts of a land uh, defeat. So I think Tracy could just be um, the upset type in race number 10 at around 12 to 1 in the market, having a first start for Pete Porter. Yes, you could be right because remember Baton Rouge last week was having his first, her first, his first run for Pit Boiter out of the snake stable, and one first up for Pit Boiter. So, uh, yeah, Tracy could fit that mold. So throw her into the calculations as well. Certainly, quite a competitive contest. Going to move along to the suggested bet now, and Graham will take us through his suggested uh, play for racing on Saturday out at Hollywood Bets uh, Kenilworth, and uh, it is a ten race program. Looks to be a nice card for. Uh, for punters, I think that uh, there's quite a bit of value to be had on the program as well with a couple of uh, short price favourites. But uh, Graham, take us through your place accumulator. I think the place accumulator is the way to go and the first leg off at 13.15. Many will bank at number four, Ale Maurice. I have two bankers, uh, two suggested bankers in my perm, but I'm not bankering in the first leg. I'm including three, Sutton Song, four, Ale Maurice, and seven, Love is a Rose. Then banker number two, Mont Loisier in the second leg, going wide in the third leg with numbers one, Among the Clouds, three, Glee Club. My top choice, number four, Call Me, Jetrix, and uh, my outsider in the field, number 13, Senor Victoria, that I think is going to run really well. Uh, Pomodoro's Jet will be the popular choice in the next leg, but I'm going wide again because I think it's very competitive, including all of numbers 4, 5, 6, and 7. Interesting runner there is Solomon Seal. Then numbers 4, Summer Night City, and 7 Basic Maneuvers. If you want to add one more in that leg, I wouldn't put you off that. Happy to bank at number 2, Prevalence, in the penultimate leg. He should uh, at least run into the top 3. And the last leg going with numbers 6, 9, Night Tiger, nine Night Bomber, and number fourteen, the Tinker Man. Um, our lurker in that race is number ten, Street Outlaw. So that's my suggested place accumulator bet for Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, Saturday, thirteen April. Graham, thanks very much. It uh, obviously looks to be uh, a, a nice card, as I mentioned for for punters. And you mentioned uh, the place accumulator could be the way to play. And uh, that uh, place accumulator of yours looks to be a good bet and um, yeah, looking forward to uh, racing on Saturday. I think that we could get some fair dividends in the exotics. I think, uh, you know, the pick sixes and the jackpots have been paying well above the average. Uh, last week was no exception. The inevitable bomb seems to come somewhere where we least expect it. But yeah, it's another very competitive but good day's racing. Nice horses on display. All the best with racing out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Saturday. 10 races to look forward to with race number one getting underway at 5 past 12.